between the first Europeans arriving in 1492 and the Victorian age, the indigenous population of the New World dropped by at least 90. The cause? Not the conquistators and company. They killed lots of people, but their death count is nothing compared to what they brought with them. Smallpox. Typhus. Tuberculosis. Influenza. Bubonic plague. Cholera. Mumps. Measles and more leaped from those first explorers to the coastal tribes, then onward the microscopic invaders spread through hemisphere of people with no defenses against them. Tens of millions died. These germs decided the fate of these battles long before the fighting started. Now ask yourself, why didn't the Europeans get sick? If New Worlders were vulnerable to Old World diseases, then surely old worlders would be vulnerable to new world diseases. Yet there was no America pox breeding eastward, infecting Europe, and cutting the population from 90 million to nine. Had America pox existed, it would have rather dampened European ability for transatlantic expansion. To answer why this did happen, we need first to distinguish regular diseases like the common cold from what we all call plagues. First, plagues spread quickly between people. Sneezes spread plagues faster than handshakes, which are faster than closeness. Plagues use more of this than this. Secondly, and importantly, they kill you quickly or you become immune. Catch a plague you, and you re dead within seven to thirty days. Survive and you all never get it again. Your body has learned to fight it. You might still carry it, the plague lives in you, you can spread it, but it can't hurt you. The surface answer to this question is not that Europeans had better immune systems to fight off New World plagues. It's that the New World didn't have plagues for them to catch. They had regular diseases, but there was no America pox to carry. These are history's biggest killers and they all come from the Old World. But why? Let's dig deeper and talk cholera. A plague you that sprays if your civilization does a bad job of separating drinking water from pooping water. London was terrible at this, making it the cholera capital of the world. Cholera can rip through dense neighborhoods, killing swaths of the population before moving onward. But that's the key. It has to move on. In a small, Isolated group, a plague you like cholera cannot survive. A plague you like cholera It kills all available victims, leaving only the immune, and then there's nowhere to go. It's a fire that burns through its fuel. But Assity, shining city on the hill, to which rural migrants flock, where hundreds of babies are born a day, this is sanctuary for the fire of plague. Fresh kindling comes to it. The plague flares and smolders and flares and smolders again, impossible to extinguish. Historically, in city borders, plagues killed faster than people could breed. Cities grew because more people moved to them than died inside of them. Cities only started growing from their own population in the 1900s, when medicine finally left its leeches and bloodletting phase and entered its soap and soup phase, giving humans some tools to slow death. But before that, a city was an unintentional playground for plagues and a grim machine to sort the immune from the rest. So the deeper answer is that the New World didn't have plagues because the New World didn't have big, dense, terribly sanitized, deeply interconnected cities for plagues to thrive. Okay, but the New World was to completely barren of cities and tribes weren't completely isolated. Otherwise, the newly arrived smallpox in the 1400s could have sprayed. Cities are only part of the puzzle. They re-required for plagues, but cities donned to make the germs that start the plagues. 
those germs come from the missing piece bum from this, this. now most germs don't want to kill you for the same reason you don't want to burn down your house germs live in you chronic diseases like leprosy are terrible because they re very good at living in you and not killing you plague lethality is an accident a misunderstanding because the germs that cause plagues don't to know they re in humans they think they re in this plagues come from animals whooping cough comes from pigs as does flu as well as from birds our friend the cow alone is responsible for measles tuberculosis and smallpox for the cow these diseases air no big deal like colds for us but when cow germs get in humans the things they do to make a cow a little sick to spread make humans very sick deadly sick now germs jumping species is extraordinarily rare that's why generations of humans can spend time around animals just fine that's it subsides why and has i being the patient zero of a new animal to human plague is winning a terrible lottery but a colonial age city raises the odds they're used to be animals everywhere horses herds of livestock in the streets open slaughterhouses meat markets pre-refrigeration and rivers of human and animal excrement running through it all a more perfect environment for diseases to jump species could hardly be imagined so the deeper answer is that plagues come from animals but so rarely that you have to raise the odds with many chances for infection and even then the newborn plague you needs a fertile environment to grow the old world had the necessary pieces in abundance but why was a city like london filled with sheep and pigs and cows and tenochtitlan was this brings us to the final level for this video anyway some animals can be put to human use this is what domestication means animals you can breed not just hunt forget for a moment the modern world go back to ten thousand when tribes of humans reach just about everywhere if you were in one of these tribes what local animals could you capture alive and successfully pen to breed maybe you read in north dakota and thinking about catching a buffalo an unpredictable violent tank on hooves that can outrun you across the plains leap over your head and travels in herds thousands strong oh and you have no horses to help you because there are no horses on the continent horses live here and want to be brought over until too late it's just you a couple buddies and stone-based tools american indians didn't fail to domesticate buffalo because they couldn't figure it out they failed because it's a buffalo no one could do it buffalo would have been amazing creatures to put to human work back in pape a bit but going to happen humans have only barely domesticated buffalo with all of our modern tools the new world didn't have good animal candidates for domestication almost everything big enough to be useful is also too dangerous or too agile meanwhile the fertile crescent to central europe had cows and pigs and sheep and goats easy-peasy animals comparatively begging to be domesticated a wild boar is something to contend with if you have only stone tools but it's possible to catch and pen and breed and feed to eat because pigs can't leap to the scale or crush all resistance beneath their hooves in the new world the only native domestication contestant was alumis they read better than nothing which is probably why the biggest cities existed in south america but they read no cow ever tree to manage a herd of alamas in the mountains of peru 
you you can do it but it's not fun nothing but drama these alamis these might seem cherry-picked examples because errant there are hundreds of thousands of species of animals yes but when you were re-stuck at the bottom of the tetch tree almost none of them can be domesticated from the dawn of man until this fateful meeting humans domesticated may be a baker does in a few unique species the world over and even to get to that higher number you need to stretch it to include honeybees and silkworms nice to have but you can to build a civilization on a foundation of honey alone these early tribes were in tismarter or better at domestication the old world had more valuable and easy animals with dogs herding sheep and cattle is easier now humans have a buddy to keep an eye on the clothing factory and the milk and cheese burger machine and the plow puller now farming is easier which means there's more benefit to staying put which means more domestication which means more food which means more people and more density and oh look where we re going city is vil population lots bring your animals plagues welcome that is the full answer the lack of new world animals to domesticate limited not only exposure to germ sources but also limited food production which limited population growth which limited cities which made plagues in the new world an almost impossibility in the old exactly the reverse and thus a continent full of plague and a continent devoid of it so when ships landed in the new world there was no america pox to bring back the game of civilization has nothing to do with the players and everything to do with the map access to domesticated animals in numbers and diversity is the key resource to bootstrapping a complex society from nothing and that complexity brings with it unintentionally a passive biological weaponry devastating to outsiders start the game again but move the domesticatable animals across the sea and history sero of disease and death flows in the opposite direction this still does leave one last question just why are some animals domesticatable and others not why could american indians domesticate deer why can't zebras be domesticated they look just like horses and what does it mean to tame an animal to answer that Click here for part two.